Well, I think we can go anywhere with this because there doesn't seem to be anything. There's no, there's no end point because it continues on into episode four. I mean, overall, I, I enjoyed uh, this episode. Uh, apart from, again, the obvious Raffi scenes that, you know, crept in and Worf being a bit more violent than what he usually was or is or whatever. But you know, I guess we'll just forgive that just for the sake of it's just modern day writing and they need to be, they need to be a bit more violent, I guess. I, I no. Oh, you don't sound happy, Adam. Well, not with those That's scenes. Those scenes are the ones that I'm like, it's very jarring. You go from like the main plot and then you go from that and it's like, yeah, we're back with this again. Um, I thought you were just a casual viewer. I, did, I am a casual viewer, but I don't know, the scenes just suck. <laughs> It's just like they do, they do. You can even tell somebody, for fuck's sake. Raffi is not a very good character. Like Worf's like, he's over there, you're losing him. He's like, I've lost him, but he's there. Like, oh okay. It's like oh for God's sake. You know Michael Dawn who plays Worf is like 70 years old. <laughs> is he? Wow. Yeah. So he looks, he, looks explains... inc- he looks incredible. Yeah, but it probably explains why he didn't do any running in that chase scene. And it gives Worf a sort of uh, a veneer or a feeling of like he's so clever now you know when neo fights morpheus in the matrix and in the beginning yeah. morpheus is so mysterious and he can do certain things that are unexplainable like jump from one scene to another scene or setting yeah. to another setting and then over the course of the movie he's just a normal person so he loses that that mysticism surrounding him or the energy Worf has that kind of feel for me where because of okay. his age and they've got to make him look cool because he was never he was never really air quotes cool in the same way that they're celebrating him now so you've got to add something back in to show you how cool he was but he never was yeah, yeah. but i'm not that's not an insult to him because he's still a great character and i like yeah. everything that he's done i think he's one of the most important characters across two two tv shows but he was just a person and now he's this yeah. morpheus-esque quality to him that's that is that you encounter before Neo gets into the Matrix. Yeah, I, I liked the way he introduced himself as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, was well it was corny but... as hell. Yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was corny as hell, but it was just funny. And then he asked for the UIT at the end of it. Uh, uh, yeah, it was corny. I just I just kept thinking, this is Game of Thrones. Did you, did you notice that Seven Seven had um, a model of Voyager in her, in her quarters? Just randomly, I just saw that. Everyone, everyone's got model ships of their previous postings on these ships. Well, it's a good little nod. It's like saying breathing is so helpful <laughs> at this point because everyone's got sh- everyone's got ships. The, the bar's got ships. The ships have got ships. It's a good little nod. Fuck you. All right. All right. <laughs> it's like the easiest <laughs> nod. The easiest nod. If anything, why doesn't she have a ship uh, model of the Raven rather than Voyager? No. Why don't she have a fucking cube in her room? Eh? A uh, cube, right? Why not a cube? Yeah. Why not? Uh, yeah. Big black repainted Rubik's cube. Right. Yeah, oh, it. it's when she was on the ball cube. <laughs> that that just that, sh- that shit is just fluff uh, to me. I don't give a fuck about any of that. Even Picard, yeah, Picard no. in episode four, he's in a room full of ships. There's like more model ships <laughs> in the fucking ready room. The ship has ships. The quarters have ships, and oh, yeah, the bar has ships. So what the um the cat and mouse chasing the nebula? Do you like that? Is that a good thing? Do you like it? You, you know, I'm only here doing this for you, really. I just want you to. <laughs> <laughs> the cat and mouse thing. The, the problem is, I'm just watching Star Trek 2. I really wish I could escape. I've just accepted what, it. Just I'm watching just watching Rafa Khan. Just Rafa basically. Khan, really. And mm. the fight, the fights is drawn out over the course of the episode, of course, so that they can have that massive mistake at the end of the episode. And Riker tells Picard to get off the bridge. Oh, I just wish that Star Trek could escape a reference. This kind of Star Trek, okay. sorry, could escape a reference, especially when. You did it in TNG. I think there was like two references in TNG. Yeah. Two original series. By the time you get to season three, two or three, you know, because they just wanted a complete reboot in a, in a way. And I wish this series could just stop giving us nostalgia for everything. Or, or the problem is it's not giving us nostalgia, but because they've given us so mm-hmm. much, you think every scene is going to be a reference to something else. So fighting in a nebula, they can't see each other. Okay, the addition of the changeling is different. Did you like that? The reveal of that? So we have to go back to the wolf scene. 
don't we? Yeah, yeah. Here's one of the fundamental problems with this series, and that's why in this in this particular episode, I'm not going to go hard on you or the show. That's why I'm going to ask you some questions in a minute, but... <laughs> go hard on me! <laughs> no, because I can be really critical. Super critical, and I, want to, and, I want to, and I want to tone it down a bit, because you are, a, because you are a casual fan, and there's no point... Yeah, on the show and, yeah. on, and on you, because there's no point getting into huge amounts of detail, but this one scene well, explains no. the problem with with everything overall, so I can nip that in the bud. Mm. But basically, Worf says to the Changeling, as a reveal, how long have you been away from the Great Link? Yeah, And he's saying that as though that has a bearing on the Changeling's ability to regenerate. When right, okay. being away from the Link doesn't create problems for any Changeling. If it did, why would they send out a hundred baby changelings in DS9? Because Odo was away from the Link for like 30 plus years. Yeah, it didn't yeah. affect him other than he just grew up without an education. And then the Bajoran yeah. scientists re-educated him. So his regeneration wow. was based on sitting in a bucket for a couple of hours. Yeah. And Worf is trying to say that his time away from the Great Link is causing this problem so that mm -hmm. the story can allow the character to then explain things about changelings to Rafi. But the problem okay. there is that Rafi was already like 20 something or 30 something when DS9 happened and she was already in right. Starfleet because she had a career. So she should know what changelings are. So it's now for yeah. us as the audience to be explained to, but right. everybody who's watching this isn't beginning their life. So they ain't beginning their Star Trek journey with these episodes. They're going to go back and watch previous Star Trek. So that there is the problem. You've got the reference. Okay. It's built on a faulty premise just to get the story chugging along. So that to me is where the show doesn't work. They've, they've got the knowledge, but then they, they, make, they mess it up a little bit with the logic of it because you, the, your time away isn't dependent on your regeneration. And then when you do catch the changeling, are you trying to say that yeah. this particular changeling hasn't changed form not once in the last 18 hours? If supposedly all changelings are like Odo where they have to regenerate every 18 hours. He didn't become a piece of cardboard. It didn't become like yeah. a wall of something or he didn't become a piece of mm -hmm. trash just for a couple of mm -hmm. hours to rest. Yeah. He just stays in that mm -hmm. human form. That's that's the problem I have. And then there's another one on the ship and that gets even more ridiculous when you get into episode four. But I digress. Well, <laughs> I liked I liked Worf's reaction where it's like, well, I can't keep him. I'm just going to shoot him. <laughs> Sorry, I oh. don't know that. Oh, whoa, well, well, well the computer spoke for you. Well. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know why yeah. the changeling just doesn't shapeshift. If you remember, even Odo would like throw out his arms and just like knock people over with his arms. He'd create those yeah. sort of ropes that would attack people. The changeling doesn't do that. It just sits there going <laughs> like he's going through the withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> just just let go. It's, it's a weird thing though, because obviously this is catered to star trek audience but obviously i think it's also trying to cater to a new audience as well i don't know with that with that i'm thinking that they just sort of try to explain this enemy that we've we haven't seen before or the new audience hasn't seen before and it's just in trying to over explain things yeah. in a way they want so, the changelings I mean, that into consideration yeah they want the changelings and in the context if i ignore that logic that broken logic mm -hmm. then it's like oh mm -hmm. this is really cool but then when mm -hmm. you say it's a faction of the dominion changelings that don't want to be held to account anymore it's like hang on but the changelings are all one entity when they break up they have different identities and then they merge again yeah it's just one it's like one life form when they're all together so odo who is still in the great link we'll assume who gave everybody the knowledge actually back up a bit if the female changeling from the end of ds9 is like you know what we will surrender and she accepts the terms yeah. then why can't all the other changelings and so when you create a faction how they're all linked it's like a piece like a big piece of water says Oh, we're going to do something different now to the rest of the water, and the rest of the water doesn't know what yeah, they're thinking. They're, <laughs> it's like, they're, ah! they're, they're, they're a terrorist faction, JJ. <laughs> but it doesn't work if you're all linked <laughs> telepathically with the goo. Yeah. How can you keep it a secret? Mm. And then, are you telling me that if Worf knows this, because mm. if they, if they if they're instrumental in if they're successful in their plan, then they'll start a yeah. new Dominion war. But that, that means right. that Starfleet doesn't know this? The Worf could just tell Starfleet, no, it's a faction. And they've got Odo, who is can can canically still alive in, in the universe, not not yeah. obviously the actor. He's still alive. He's trusted. So that he can just explain, no, it's a fa terrorist faction. And it's like, oh, okay, then we won't start a Dominion War. Okay. And if they did, yeah. 
the Dominion can't send ships through the wormhole because oh, it's fucking Cisco will destroy all the ships, but they can send ships through the wormhole. The Federation can, but why would the Federation do that? It's like I could spend a whole episode just talking about this, but we've got to move on. I'll let you have your say, but I just, <laughs> just ah. I know, but it's just, that's opening a bit. I don't, I don't know. We're, we're trying to contain the story into what it is right now because then we're just branching off into different things. We've got what, which obviously the average audience member is going to be like, well, I don't know anything about that. I, don't give a shit. I know. That's why I've got to tone it so, down because there's two yeah. massive pieces of broken logic here. I just can't get past. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. Just wait till you get to episode four. Fuck. <laughs> it's, uh, well, the, the nebula is not a nebula, is it? It's, no. a, it's a womb. I'm, I've got a. Is it a womb? <laughs> Okay, okay. I got the feeling when they started saying it's acting unusual, I thought they're referring to it as that the nebula's acting unusual. So I'm thinking, to me, obviously, you're a big sci fi sort of person, you think, oh, it's a, it's a living thing. They've got into a living thing. So I saw that sort of coming a mile away as soon as they said it wasn't a nebula and it was reacting strange. I was like, it's like they've gone into a big whale or something. There was a Voyager episode where they went into a nebula that they thought was a nebula and it was actually a life. Yeah. Thing. This is yeah, kind of that. similar. So for the Vulcan yeah. officer to say, oh, we've never seen anything like this before. It's like, really? 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 I'm doing that. that oh, doing that Stewie yeah. face. I've got the head actually for Stewie, but it's the wrong way. Stewie's head is this way. And my head is this way. But when he's Did like, you like... Did you like anything from this episode? Because I've, you know, generally got the general feeling that people, not just myself, like this episode. Yeah, a lot of people liked it. Um, yeah, did sure, you, Picard. You like did you like the Beverly and Picard scene? Was that good? Did that do No, I didn't you? like it. Not because, no? well, one, it was a bit too wordy, but two, I just don't believe the character of Beverly would do such a thing. Why would she try and raise okay. a child by herself? And since this has loads of throwbacks to modern uh, modern times, a lot of women yeah. think they can do it themselves. And a lot, there are a lot of problems in society where uh, a traditional family would would solve a lot of those problems if you've got way with children. So it kind of perpetuates gender stereotypes or the problems mm, yeah. within within our current modern day society about a woman thinking she can go it alone. And maybe in the 24th century she could because it's a utopian paradise. So maybe yeah. she could, but it, it's still, I mean, I don't want to sound like a traditionalist or conservative because I'm not, but she's ruined that 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 traditional value that you know, 90% of the people on the planet subscribe to, where it's one man, one wife, and, you know, 2.4 children, basically. I didn't get that argument, though. I didn't look at it like that. I looked at it like... I know you didn't. She was, she was scared of what he... what Picard was or what he is, you know, his characteristics, his, his lifestyle. Yeah. So she, in her, so she did have a... It, it was wrong, but she had a... Her points were sort of valid in a strange way, but Picard was... I was more on his side, because it was like, well, why shouldn't he be a part of the kid's life and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, but she judged him unfairly and i don't think that was right and to make it out as though everything 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 centers around picard in his life mm. which would ruin everyone else's life throw their life into discord i just thought no because that you're, you're trying to make everything happen around picard and he's not that character he's just a starfleet captain mm. and then to find out that the sun was living in london anyway which is just like a euro a euro star fucking train journey for us british yeah. who know the geography but it's just yeah. a train right away and he's he's just living Effectively, if, if aliens wanted to do an orbital bombardment and they want to take out take out Chateau Picard, I'm sure they'd have a few <laughs> photons left and just like, you know, we'll take out that fucking school in London because we know Jack Crusher's there. Just <laughs> I mean I wouldn't mind if he if Jack Crusher was on fucking Bajo having an education, the furthest possible part away from Picard. But he's 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 the next country. He's a fucking yeah, river away. He's an English channel he, away. He, he, yeah, but he wouldn't know. <laughs> Would he? You know, the you aliens know, would. The aliens that Beverly were so fit was so fearful of. They would know. Yeah, but they weren't <laughs> chasing them all their lives, were they? I have no clue. I just didn't like that scene. I thought it was unfair to Picard. I just thought it was unrealistic from Beverly's, uh, for, for Beverly as a character mm. within her logic. This, this just didn't make sense in the story when you find out that Jack was in London. So no, I didn't like it. Well, he, well, he had his education there. I don't know when they started tracking these two, but it wasn't it wasn't then, was it? I mean, Picard certainly because... does feel like Patrick Stewart does feel like he's back into the Picard role. I mean, there's that one good yeah. point, and it does give the Beverly character something to do, but other than mm. that, I, uh, sorry, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> and I feel such a okay. I feel such a Scrooge, and I don't want to be a Scrooge. I want to enjoy it, but they're just 
they just don't get the characters or the plot or the, or the logic, story logic correct. What did you think of people looking out of the window to look for the other ship? <laughs> Something um... like that. This is just light. <laughs> he sure even says, somebody look out the window and we'll watch out for this fucking shrike. <laughs> and then they're literally, well, actually... they're literally looking out of the window. looking, for... And then the woman yeah, yeah, says, yeah. there's a ship 3,000 meters away. <laughs> How the fuck did you eyeball a ship 3,000 meters away? In the darkness of space, where there's no third point of reference to judge the distance from. How did you feel about that, Adam? <laughs> you fucking... You, you think about these things way too much. These stupid details. That okay, okay. Audience, it's not going to leave a crap okay. about. Okay. The thing uh, is, uh, what I saw is that... No, no, no. What I saw is that is they couldn't use their sensors in the nebula. That was the foregone conclusion, right? They couldn't use it. So, yes, they were staring out the fucking windows so they could see... If the fucking ships were fucking coming, <laughs> I, just, I don't understand what the issue is with that. Because I'll, I'll, sensors, I'll do you one better. Nebula. I'll do you one yeah. better. Why yeah. don't they have a camera that can look out the window for them? Why isn't there a digital overlay over these fucking screens, the windows, to keep to judge distances? If you want to, if you want to say, oh, you're too nitpicky, so why don't you just do because an L cars, an L cars over well, overlay panel? I don't know the technology of these ships. All right, they might no, well but they be, could. The nebula's affecting it. Yeah, the nebula's affecting, it. The nebula's what about affecting it all. Just like a personal camera, then the camera still electronics still work on the ship. We have a camera that's inside the ship, protection of the ship, so that it can judge distances. Oh, no. oh, so, oh, inside the ship. Is that what they're going to do? They're going to build. They're going to build cameras inside the ship to look outside the windows. No, you know three thousand meters sound? away. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> Fuck off, show. <laughs> no, you're you're judging it. You're oh, nitpicking. But... Far too much. No, no, I'm not. Nitpicking way too much. No, I'm not. You, you really are. No. Way too much. Come on now. <laughs> okay, so you Come don't have a problem with it. Okay, okay, fine. You don't have a problem no. with that. Next question. I, what I did just you sit think... there and think, oh. Okay, oh. you don't have a problem with it. You've answered the question, right. What did you yeah. think of them shooting a photon torpedo instead of just firing 50 fucking torpedoes? <laughs> I thought it was a bit daft where he said, yeah, fire everything we've got. No, 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 before that, before but... that. They said they fire one and they say, oh, let's just shoot it. Why fire one? Why don't you fire 51 and then shoot them all? Because why would they do that? It's wasting all the ammunition. Yeah, but you, there's your chance to hit it. You're going to pretend to shoot it with one photon torpedo. If they can shoot it, then the fucking Shrike can shoot it, but the Shrike doesn't. And then it creates right, this blast because... wave. So you just shoot it with 50 mm. torpedoes. No, because then it, it, what if it, it wouldn't do anything to it. They said that themselves. 50 torpedoes wouldn't destroy that ship. They said their weapons would do would be pretty much useless against that ship because it's too big. It's like a warship. Right. So you fire one, and then the blast wave from one actually blows it out of the way. I watched it twice. I watched this episode. It was so much better. It was actually better for all my nitpicking that I watched it two times. <laughs> and you see that ship get just get thrown to the side. It gets thrown away like Mario fucking throws a fucking turnip from Super Mario Two. It gets l lobbed <laughs> out into the, yeah. out into the clouds. From one yeah, from the yeah. concussion of one photon torpedo, you don't have a problem yeah. with that. How many photon torpedoes do they have? They don't have that many, do they? Well, they've got five more. Should we get to that? No, they fired. I think they fired four. They then, fired one in that, that scene and shot it. Yeah, they fired. They fired one in that scene and then they fired four at the stupid ship and then they obviously it did that wormhole crap portal thing and then it, it hit in the back of their ship. Right, but before we get into that. Which, they fire one, them, really. and they shoot. They shoot one torpedo, and they shoot at it. But the Shrike is right. just like, "Ugh, let's not yeah. shoot it ourselves, and then do yeah. a you know reverse. Let's just sit here and wait for the blast wave." Because they weren't expecting them to shoot their own torpedo. Okay, so so okay, you don't have a problem with that. Fine. Um, what do you think about the Shrike not using the tractor beam again when the at the end of the episode? The ship is falling. The Shrike could just pick it up. Jack Crusher is so important that they don't use the tractor beam to just stop the Titan from drifting into the nebula. What do you think of that? What that do you think of like... that? <laughs> <laughs> the nebula was uh, affecting their, uh, you know, stupid tractor beam. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> What do you think about the Titan Doctor hating on Beverly? I thought that was stupid. Okay, finally, I got a win. It's like, 
one. Because <laughs> one was, yeah, that just seems like it just seemed really forced, and it was like, oh look, Beverly is really good, and you're really shit. Yeah. It just it's... gave it just gave her sort of a use of like, oh look, Beverly does have her uses. See, she's uh, right. she she sees things that you don't see. You know, you know what's interesting. I just thought about this now. So this is how much I didn't think about it, but then now I'm thinking about it. The Doctor okay. is a trill. She's a member of the trill species, right? So you would assume that as a trill, she has dealt with those symbiotes that go inside the trill. And many times there are problems where you've got to pay attention to the stomach because of the trill symbiote. So okay. it seems even more implausible that this woman would be less sensitive to concussions that the scanners can't pick up that's all i'm gonna stop that it must, it must it must drive you insane because to me i was just like no it's just the normal this, this show was a fucking yeah trill i've no i fucking did don't forget i'm writing i'm writing my own show and i put so much thought into it and so it just reflects it just reflects on the criticisms mm. it just creates these criticisms well, that i have i think like obviously the writers for this show they probably don't have a lot of knowledge of Trek, which is probably self-evident. Um, I think the writers of TNG and stuff like the past, you know, seasons of Star Trek, they were all like proper novelists and stuff, weren't they? So yes, actual science fiction so, writers. Yeah, so they were properly ingrained in it. So they were properly that they treat every episode like a, a full-fledged like even movie or something. You know, a lot of thought and detail would go into it. So yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't think it's fair comparing this to that because you're not going to get the same result. It's just going to, it is going to be watered down. There is going to be details that are going to be missed. And there is going to be things that are not going to, like for a fucking fully fledged hardcore Star Trek fan, you are going to like literally probably be pulling your teeth out. But for like an everyday audience like me, I'm just like, yeah, that looks like, all right. That's good. <laughs> what, what, what does Dawn think? She doesn't watch this. She doesn't watch this. This is me. Oh, okay. Just you. Okay. Yeah. The other question I have, actually, I'll tell you something that was good. I'll, I'll give you a break. When they feed in the backstory of Riker's dead son into the story to justify the things that Riker is thinking, I like yeah. that. Yeah. That's it. That's that. That's all I want to say. <laughs> okay. Well, I like the I like the tension that was created between uh, Picard and and uh, Riker like that. I would have liked <laughs> it more. If they flipped it, mm. Picard was always the one that was more cautious. Riker is the one mm. that would actually shoot at a ship with Picard on board, who, as he did do with the Borg cube. Riker is the yeah. one that's more gung ho, and they, they flipped mm. it, and I didn't I didn't think that worked. Okay. Again, it goes back to the Doctor and Beverly thing. It creates a false sense of discord amongst the characters. <clears throat> I suppose they flipped it because the whole dynamic of losing his son and stuff like that and then Picard's obviously got a son so he's got something to fight for I guess and then Riker's like oh, I need to save people I don't want to be so reckless I guess that could be perceived as that the way of looking at it yeah maybe um, you know these, these episodes get 8 to 9 million per episode what viewers no um, like budget it's 8 to 9 million okay which is pretty insane um when we're talking well, this... about effects and stuff like that and like battle damage to the ship, which I would have liked to see more of because it's been taking a beat in this ship. Yeah, you you'll see really that in see episode four. Visibly. You are seeing actual battle damage now from the actual... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Last, they they, they, they remember to render in the, the you know, the damage. <laughs> <laughs> what else What else do you want to share? Oh, oh, I don't know. I feel like you can just shoot everything down. <laughs> no, I'm not shooting everything down. Uh, oh. you've, you've shot all my fucking oh, questions yeah. down except for one. Well, you're like, you think about it too much. And it's like, okay, maybe I do. That's why I can't enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You just, yeah. Well, well, maybe. I mean, I, I'd be probably the same if I was like dead hardcore into Star Trek or into something like that. I probably would be <laughs> thinking as like, like you would be. But don't, don't, because yeah, I but don't, don't have that knowledge, I'm kind of like, oh, it's good. It's this. I, I, I have a limited knowledge of Star Trek. I'm not like, yeah. I don't know every single minute detail. I know. But I don't think you, I don't think you should dismiss a lot of my criticism just because I'm hardcore into Star Trek a lot of it is because of Star Trek yes but when you know the st when you know any story well enough you should be able to mm. understand the logic of the story to an extent it doesn't flow properly 
Just like oh, I didn't yeah. know much about Game of Thrones, but I understood by six season six, seven, and eight, the story wasn't making sense. But I never read the books. I feel like the guys doing helming this season now, it's a fucking, it's a bit of a shit task. Like I said before in the little previous episodes we've had, it's like he's got to sort of either retcon or repair the damage that was done in the previous two seasons, and then try and fit in all of this kind of story in ten episodes, and then trying to have it make sense. But also trying to keep the fan base sort of happy, adding elements that are kind of obviously, yeah, Easter eggs are fucking a bit overdone these days. But yeah, add them in just for like shits and giggles because some of them are there just for that, just for fan service. And it must be quite difficult to sort of, it's a difficult balance. Also, you've got the writers that probably don't know much. You've probably got the studio as well that's probably trying to interject some bullshit into whatever's been yeah. said or put out. I can't, I don't know. It must be quite difficult. I, I mm. think the guy who's doing it, like I said before, I think if he did, if they gave him a show, a separate show to do from scratch, it might be better. It might, I hope, promise. He um, did He did do a uh, 12 Monkeys series. It's supposed to be good. Was, oh, okay. Well, yeah, I haven't watched all, it. Right, yeah. But that's not Star Trek. You can do anything that. you want inside that universe. There is another thing I wanted to, because we've only got like eight minutes left. Do you remember the bar scene where they do the de face de-aging? between Riker and Picard. That scene explains the whole 17 seconds, which is the title of this episode. And then later yeah. in that same episode, there is se supposedly 17, 17 seconds where Picard is going to find out whether Jack has died or not. Yeah, I don't like episodes that set up something that's instrumental in the same episode. And sadly, episode four does the same thing. There's something that they set up that is a flashback to something that happens in the episode. And... Mm -hmm. uh, Picard season one used to do this as well. There was a flashback that would set something up. It's re yeah. I think that's really lazy from a, from a writer's perspective. I think that's really lazy. But I did like the bit in in that scene where Riker says, "Don't you ever want to have a son?" Hang on, Picard is like seventy years old. Do you not think he's past his prime? <laughs> I know also, something about. I know something about, yeah, know something about that though. Didn't, didn't... In a TNG episode, didn't he already have a son raising a family right. in a holodeck thing? In a holodeck, yeah. He gets his his brain gets hijacked by a satellite, and he gets he lives a whole life in like thirty minutes. That yeah. just seems to be overlooked by all the writers from all three seasons. He had a son, yeah. and it has no impact yeah. on him. Think about the trauma. The trauma of his mother supposedly affects him more in mm. season two than living an entire fucking life from TNG than it does now in in that timeline. <laughs> doesn't track, does yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that thinking. Okay. I've done that. I, remember, I don't know why it made me remember that, but I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that sort of thing happening. <laughs> we were having that conversation. And I was like, wait, he's done that. Yeah. The, um, the bit where <laughs> Deanna, though, she says, bring the whiskey, and Riker leaves the bar, and he doesn't take the whiskey with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want her to come back into it, but obviously she's on the planet, so she won't be coming back anytime she soon. She will. But... She will. There's, there's, been some trailer, there's been some trailers where... They talk about their problems together face to face. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Have you got anything else to say? Only the random thing of is Romulan ale illegal again? It's on and off, on and off, isn't it? I mean, there's no Romulan, there's no Romulan Star Empire, so why would it still be illegal? I, I don't. I know. It, it'd, don't be get more, it. it'd be more, it'd be more pricey now because there's none of it to be fucking manufactured because the whole planet got destroyed. <laughs> right. They, well, the whole the, the star, one star system destroyed their entire empire. They must have uh, yeah, yeah. Totally centralized their government. I, if I have to have one little thing to say, do you know the Bajoran helmsman of the Titan? Yeah. You know he's Bajoran, right? You noticed. He's, we he's wearing yeah, the yeah. earring and he's got the nose ridge. Yeah. Riker didn't say anything about his earring. And I'm like, okay, he's learned something since meeting Ensign Rowe. But that Bajoran says, my God. It's like, why don't you say my by the prophets or something? Why did you say my God? <laughs> People on Twitter are like, he's half human. But if he's half human, why is he wearing all the Bajoran garb? Just like... When you've got black people who are half black, but they only support black culture. Well, I'm half black. I can say what I want about black culture. But yeah, but what about defending white culture? But you never do. <laughs> Just like that fucking who's that Formula Race one race car driver, the black guy. Uh, well, Hamilton. Yeah, he always supports black mm. issues, but he, but he keeps saying I'm mm. half black. It's like yeah, okay, visually you are clearly some kind of stew, but you never seem to want to be <laughs> pro white in saying anything. <laughs> Yeah, race is a spectrum, Adam. I even yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the point. We're both mixed race anyway. Let's just talk about the episode again. But we're going to yeah, go on, no, go on, go on. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll save what, we'll save the race stuff the, for the um... normal loose rants episode. Go on, what? Uh... <laughs>
<laughs> what about the um the stupid Doctor Strange weapon? What's going on with that? That's not the real weapon, is it? That's just... <laughs> right. It is. I mean, <laughs> it's the it's the weapon, but not the real threat weapon. It's the I weapon know. that's distracting us from the real weapon. This is just the fucking entree. When you see what happens to that weapon in episode four, it's like, what the fuck? But and they still they... reiterated the fact that it was only 117 people dying. I was like, no, how? How, how, why do they keep saying that? I don't know, but they use it in this episode, episode three, and it's like, okay, it's kind of dramatic. And then in the time that they've trapped the Titan, effectively, they've, they've put it in a loop. They don't fire on it. They don't do anything. They just mm. show off the weapon, and it allows the Titan to escape. But why are you allowing them to escape? You just shoot them, yeah. knock out the engines, and then you capture Jack Crusher. There's, it's like, there's so many opportunities to get what you want. Vadik can, and they don't do it. It's yeah, just yeah. like, we're just, we're just waiting for them to take their chance and they don't yeah i did find that scene bizarre when they would accept them going through it and then they would appear again and then they yeah. it and appear again i was like well what, what, what's going on here then just disable them i thought that myself when i was watching it like just disable their engines surely that right. would be the logical thing to do which picard does at the end which we've only got two minutes left but did you agree that Riker said you've just killed us all get off the bridge did you agree with that way of phrasing it no i don't think so because i don't think you'd say that to him but i suppose i don't know in the moment he's angry but then it's like well you called you made the call and it was the right because you hadn't you had no other option about what to do yeah so it's either like fight or just surrender and get taken over so at that point it's like well yeah you're gonna have to do what he said to do because you had no other option at that point and then right. he, I was eager to know that like, the, the, the torpedoes were going to come back <laughs> on them and hit them again. I was like, oh, crap. But again, though, I thought that, that would have, surely that would have wiped them out. The ship was already battle damaged as it was. That would have been destroyed them, wouldn't it? I was like, it's full at the rear of them. That would have, surely that would have at least heavily disabled the ship. Yeah, I, I, so I that, have no that idea. Bit was a bit like, I was like, ah, that would have completely fucked up. Oh, well, I did like, I'll tell you another thing I did like in the last 90 seconds of this episode is that the woman mm -hmm. who plays the Vulcan played a really good Vulcan. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I liked her, yeah. That, that's how much, uh, that's how much I like paying to these uh, detail, paying attention to these details. Like, it was actually a proper Vulcan, but in episode four, I see another Vulcan hogging this guy, and I'm like, you fucked up now, bro, with your characterization. <laughs> a different Vulcan is like hogging this human. And it's like, it's just like a quick second I caught it, and it's like, that's not a Vulcan. It must be like a secret Romulan. <laughs> it's a half and half again. Yeah, half cast, like fucking. Yeah, what, yeah. Did you say? what did you say? David Hamilton. Yeah. What, what's his Lewis name? Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. I don't, yeah, I yeah. don't know his name. Not, I don't no, know his no. name, and it's not because he's black. I just. Fucking, I just live in Hong Kong, okay? <laughs> Not important. No one likes one that one. <laughs> right, let's leave it there. That was a bit of a slapdash of an episode, but I think we got a lot out of it. 